Sometimes when you're testing a receiver or maybe just playing around with it, you'd really like to find a steady, reliable signal to listen to and do your testing or tuning up. Measure your receiver's AGC or perhaps a filter's characteristics. Tuning up and testing on an off-air signal is unreliable. Often the signal is fleeting or sometimes the band conditions are changing. Okay, so you can always use a signal generator, but a steady signal from a signal generator is not quite the same for testing some receiver functions as a genuine CW signal that's coming in via the antenna. Wouldn't it be nice if you had your own little CW beacon, something that just sat in a loop and banged out a repeating CW message this unit is a tiny beacon using an AT Mega 328, so the same microcontroller chip in the Nano and the Uno, and an SI5351 breakout board. In this really simple prototype, there is no display and no controls, so the message and the frequency and the timing are set up in the Arduino script. There's nothing to stop you from making this little beacon run on multiple frequencies or multiple bands. The way that I've set up the script currently is that the keyed CW is generated on clock zero and the message is sent on each of a series of bands in turn. In an earlier version of the script, I had all three clocks running on three separate bands. So for instance, an 80 meter CW beacon on clock zero, a 40 meter one on clock one, and a 20 meter one on clock two. And that worked fine. This project is based on what I call my universal VFO controller board. And there's a video at the top right hand corner now that will explain this particular board. It's my design for a universal radio controller with an AT Mega 328, a 5 volt regulator, and a header for an SI5351 breakout board. But it also does a number of other things that are useful. It brings out the programming header for the FTDI interface, the serial interface. It brings out a header for a rotary encoder front panel push buttons and a paddle and keying memories or keyer memories. And to keep it universal, it also has headers for all of the data and analog inputs and outputs, line drivers or buffers across here on each of the clocks. So these buffers provide a around about 12 to 13 dBm into a 50 ohm load which avoids the need to take the clock to a separate buffer stage. Let's turn it on. If it's too strong, just damp down the signal to the receiver. For instance, I've switched it to a dummy load in the shack. The Arduino script is here on my GitHub repository. So I didn't write these 522 lines of code from scratch. I modified an existing repository from a few years back for a simple Arduino Kia. The Kia had a CW ident function in it that simply looped through a pre-canned CW message, so it already was a beacon. All I had to do was to add in the code to key an SI5351 clock. It has been running on just 3540, but there is an array here which contains one element for each one of the frequencies that I want the beacon to operate on. So if I uncomment, 
7, 14 and 21, the beacon will cycle through those four bands, sending its message on each of those frequencies in turn with about a second gap between. Upload to the beacon. The beacon's running on a 9 volt supply, it's drawing 50 milliamps. So I reckon I can connect it up to a 9 volt transistor battery and it'll run for, well, at least a few hours, maybe even overnight. I put the beacon into a plastic bag for some moisture protection and stuffed it into a tree not too far from home. In the morning, the beacon was dead. I hope this nano beacon will become an additional RF signal source for testing and for playing around with receivers. It's very easy to do. All you need is an Arduino Nano and an SI5351 connected via I2C. If you go to my GitHub repository, you can grab the code there. It should only take minutes to download and try out. Let me know in the comments if you try it or if you have any other suggestions.